Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. If this is your first time coming to my channel, I'm glad to have you because I'm starting a whole new Python series. I do a SAS series as well on the side. So if you're interested in SAS programming, I have tons of videos out for that. But we're going to focus on a Python fundamentals playlist. So this playlist is going to get you prepared to do machine learning models, statistics in Python, as well as deep learning down the road. But before we get to those points, we want to make sure that we have the fundamentals down pat. So the first tutorial is going to be on a data type called strings, and it's a type of Python variable. I decided not to go through integers and floats since those are numbers, and it's pretty intuitive for people to catch on to those variable types. And I don't want to make a video for every single variable type, so I decided to focus on one that may not be so intuitive, which is strings. Okay, so I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. So the objectives of this presentation today is we're going to look at why should we even care about strings in data science? How are they actually utilized? We're going to define what a string is. We're going to index a string, and that means just pulling out a piece of the string. We're going to learn common string methods that we can do in Python and how to join strings together, and that's called concatenation. So to start off with, how do strings appear in data science or data analysis, okay? So strings can show up as variables. So if you have a data frame, there could be a whole column that has car type, like Ford, Chevrolet, Toyota, et cetera. And all of those are text and it's stored as an object. So a lot of times you'll see strings stored as the variable type object in Python. Strings can also show up as text when we do things called natural language processing and sentiment analysis. In NLP, it's just a fancy um, processing method and utilized in machine learning where we're able to process big groups of text and from that get people's feelings. So for instance, we can scrape down a whole bunch of tweets from Twitter. We can classify each tweet as a good tweet, bad tweet, or neutral tweet. Say for instance, we're searching for tweets based off of the new iPhone. We can take all of that text down. We're gonna use some string methods to help process that text. And in turn, we're gonna use that text to help predict how people are feeling about the iPhone, okay? So strings are very important in Python. All right, so what actually is a string? So it's enclosed by single or double quotes. Pick one. I normally stick with double quotes. It can contain numbers, letters, or special characters. So in this example that we have here, I have three variables, and I'm assigning a variable to a different string. So the name variable is assigned to a string of jelly. The address variable is assigned to a string of 123 Main Street. And the expression variable is assigned to I love Disney. And you can see that I have included numbers in some of these strings. I have included special characters. I have used double quotes and I have used single quotes as well. Okay, so strings, they show up as red in the Python interface, at least for Jupyter Notebook. So that gives you a good hint that you're working with a string or in turn some type of object. All right, so you can index a string. So that means that you can pull out parts of the string by using brackets. Indexing starts at zero. So if I want to get the zero to third, pretty much, um, index, that would be zero to four. So it's up to, but not including the last number. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So in this example here, right, and let me get out my little drawing tool. We have Miss Jelly, that's the string assigned to name. The M is going to be at position zero. The S is gonna be at position one. The period is gonna be at position two. And the J is going to be at position three, okay? So I'm saying name bracket, give me the zeroth index up to, but not including the fourth index, right? So when I run this code, I see that it gives me ms period, right? It gives me 0, 1, 2, 
Okay, so it's up to but not including the last number. So I definitely can pull out parts of a string by doing this indexing method. Okay, so if we wanted to do one to five, for instance, before we run this, let's think about what that may be. So M is zero, S is one, period is two, right? And then we have a space. Then we have the J as four and we have the E as five. So we definitely can see that it should stop at J. So it's gonna be up to, but not including the fifth because J is at the fourth index space. And it's gonna start at S since that is at the first index space, okay? So this is how we can index a string. You don't have to put in a number in the beginning. It's gonna go all the way up to the fourth index. If I were to leave this blank, I also don't have to put a number at, after the colon and it's gonna take me to the end of the string. Okay, so definitely play around with this piece of code on how you can pull out parts of a string. The key is, is that it's gonna be up to, but not including the last number, okay? All right, so that is indexing a string. And outside of doing those positive numbers, we can also do negative number indexing. So say for instance, I knew that the email starts at the ninth index, okay, or negative ninth index. So I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's where the at starts at. I can run a string where it strips off the email portion of my string. Because say, for instance, I only care about usernames, okay? I want to get the usernames from a whole list of use Gmail usernames or Gmail email addresses that I have. And so knowing that gmail.com is going to start at the negative ninth until the end of the string, I can strip off gmail.com and then get everyone's username, okay? If I wanted to go back even further, for instance, I can even include the at to strip off the at symbol at the end of everyone's email, okay? So it can also do negative indexing. Outside of that, we have methods, okay? And methods are just actions that we can, that our strings can perform or things that we can change about our strings. So we can definitely change the appearance of a string, right? So this is what this second bullet point is saying. So I can make a string capital, I can make it lowercase, I can swap the cases, etc. I can remove blank spaces from a string. I can split the string based off of a delimiter. I can do Boolean checks and so much more. So there's tons of things that you can do with a string that there's tons of Python document documentation out there for us. So in this example, I have the string jelly dough assigned to the variable full underscore name. And I want to change that string to uppercase. So the method is going to come with a trailing parentheses, okay? So I'm gonna say full name dot upper and I get jelly dough in all uppercase. I can split my string based off of a delimiter. So I'm gonna call dot split and in those parentheses, I'm gonna put a comma here or I can do a space or I can do a hyphen. And I see that it returns a list with every piece that is separated by that delimiter. So I have a list of two items there. I can also strip any lead in spaces or trail in spaces. So in this case, I have theme park Disney, and I see that there's a lot of space in the beginning of this string and a lot of space afterwards. So I can call the dot strip method and it's gonna take away those leading and trailing spaces, okay? It's gonna strip or trim all of those blank spaces. All right, so these are just some of the many methods that you can do with strings. There's also a dot lower, which is important in NLP, where you have to change your text to all lowercase, okay? And so there's plenty of methods that you can utilize in strings. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is concatenation and how we join two strings together. You're gonna be able to join strings together using the plus sign. 
You cannot concatenate a string and an integer together, okay? So they have to be two strings that you're joining together, or if you're doing addition, it has to be two numbers. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. So in this case, we have first name assigned to a string of jelly, last name assigned to a string of dough, and I want to put these strings side by side. That's what concatenation is. So I'm gonna do first name plus last name. And I see that I have jelly dough, okay? I don't have a space there. It looks kind of funky to me. So I can also add a space. So I can do first name plus an empty string, right? Which is just a space plus last name. And I can get jelly dough, how I would normally write it. And then in this case, I'm trying to add a string together with an integer. I know that it's an integer in this case because it's green. And when I do that, Python yells at me. It says, I can't concatenate a string in an integer. I can only concatenate a string with a string. So I said, okay, Python, let me change my integer to an actual string and that's called typecasting. So in this case, I'm doing name plus an empty string, plus I'm changing the department number to a string. So this is what str does. It changes an integer in this case to a string. And now I'm able to perform the concatenation, okay? So keep in mind, you can join strings together by using the addition sign. You can add in blank strings if necessary. And you can only concatenate two strings together or two integers together. So with that being said, that is a quick overview of strings in Python. Keep in mind that strings are very important. You're gonna come across them in columns of your data frame. For those who are gonna do some NLP, you're gonna come across them as well. There are different methods that you can apply to strings to make your text lowercase, uppercase, to take out blanks, to strip um, strings apart as well. And you can join strings together, which is called concatenation. So thank you all for listening to this short video on Python variable strings. Please like and subscribe to Learning with Jelly, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.